All right, so this is a trade that I took today on the one minute chart on German 40, also known as DAX. I don't know why people don't like trend lines or they think that they're imaginary lines, but I'm gonna get into this trade and I'm gonna show you kind of raw what happened. It's gonna be floating, playing on in the uh, side of the screen right here, not editing this video. So what we're gonna start off with is no indicators. Um, I have two volume profiles and a super trend and trend lines, but essentially on the higher time frame, like the 15 minute, we were on an uptrend and price broke through this uptrend and then immediately came back down. So the indicators that you're going to need are super trend. Uh, it's probably just gonna be this top one, the uh, most popular one. And the settings that you're gonna use on that is going to be 10 and 2.5. Then the next ones that you're gonna use are volume profiles. I have two of them. I like these ones by KV4 coins. They're fine, they're all the same. Um, essentially what I'm gonna do is, uh, the reason I have two is because I wanna set one to bearish volume and then the other one to bullish volume. So in the settings, just select one bearish, change the color to your bearish candles, as well as the um, point of control, the POC line. And then the other one is just gonna be the opposite, bullish yellow, because my bullish candles are yellow. And so what we're gonna be targeting, once we have that break, we okay, so it rejected off the trend line, but like broke through it and then immediately came back. And then using the super trend, we saw a sell indication right there. So I got in on a trade right there. And as it made that first rejection right here off that trend line, I was like, cool, I'm good to go. And I waited a little bit and I just created, you could probably see it on the video, this like 45 degree angle in the, in the trend. And so price came down, started trading below it, came back up, dipped above it, created a wick and then shot back down, respecting that trend line. So I kept slowly moving my stop loss into profit because I had already lost a trade before during the day and I didn't wanna risk any more of my capital. So I just played it safe and trailed this thing the whole time. Um, as we got here, it broke out of the trend line and the thing that I was concerned about was like, okay, maybe it's just a trap, it's gonna break out and then it's gonna continue down. I like to see a break out and a retest and rejection up before I actually get out of my trend line trade. So this one broke out and then broke back in and continued on getting some nice momentum, not even hugging the trend line, but really pushing past the trend line. Then we got this huge engulfing candle and then it just stopped. It stopped dead. And the reason why I have the volume profiles on here is see where there is bullish and where there is bearish volume. So I'm gonna adjust these a little bit so it's gonna be easier for you to see and bring these to like 40 and that'll bring it closer to the price. I like it at 100 because then it stays further away or sometimes it overlaps the price with the default settings like you see right here. But if we take this out, we can see that this is a large area of volume that price wanted to go to. Now it's a mixture of bullish and bearish volume. You can see the two layers of the white and the yellow. Now, once it got to this area, it continued down breaking through this peak area, both of these points of control. The points of control is the highest volume in a given range with that either bearish or bullish. So the bullish volume right here, the yellow, it broke straight clean through that, hit the bearish volume and then continued down. That's where I moved my stop loss to because I was like, cool, if it goes above the point of control, I'm not gonna like it. I'm also looking at the, uh, the New York Open, that right here. Um, this is just a representation of where price opened up for the day. 12 midnight New York time, and that was right here. So I knew that that was gonna be an area, it either was gonna retest and then continue down or break above. So this was my ultimate stop loss area. And once that rejection happened off of there, I saw the retest down below 
and then creating a new buy signal off of the super trend. So we had broken the downtrend right here, confirmation through the super trend, and this is all in the one minute time frame. Came back down, tested this area, and then started coming back up. I just let it hit my stop loss. I could have closed it here. I was thinking about it. I've already circled it on the chart. I saw the breakout, then we got the retest, and then the continuation up. So in an overall like longer position, if I was on a higher time frame, I probably would have held this seeing as this was my original stop loss and this was my target which looking left is just this consolidation area right here slash double bottom i figured it'd be a nice target to go for but trends started to slow down plus this is dax we usually die down at about 3 p.m ish europe time um, it's not like nas where it goes for hours and hours and hours the trading window is really just nine to five london session time so once we had that break, retest, and then come back up, I knew I was out of my position. But you could see in the replay how wonderfully it respected the trend line. And I know it's an imaginary line, but the shit works. And if you wanna trade on the one minute time frame, I suggest trying something like this. One of the easiest things that you can do, um, I was going for the moon here, it was quite a big position. That was a one to six. But essentially, if you just wanna get one to twos, all you have to do is, you know, Set your stop loss at the buy signal when it breaks and you create the super trend and then go for a one to two risk to reward ratio. And you can get those pretty consistently. Like, you know, we had the break, stop loss there, shooting for a one to two, you would have gotten it here. Now it doesn't work for every one of them and you gotta like overall look at the trend and have deeper analysis of price action or whatever, but essentially, I mean, this was a banger of a trade. Now it's just gonna fall into this consolidation. There's less volume in the markets. The moves happened here and here. I was able to catch the, the bottom half of it. So yay me, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to learn how to trade on Trade Locker, or if you wanna just get an account and trade on Trade Locker, as opposed to doing your analysis on TradingView, I'm doing it on here because it's just easier for you guys to see, but uh, you can get a demo account with Osprey. That's gonna be the first link down below. And if you guys checked out my Telegram group, I kind of feel like it's important. Yesterday was a really good trading day for me. I have four funded account challenges running. I'm gonna read this to you guys really quick. You should be trading every single day. Again, you should be trading every single day. Why? Because you can only master something through repetition. Again, you can only master something through repetition. Every pro athlete, every pro trader, every professional, anything, they got better through repetition. I don't give a fuck if it's a demo account, a live account, a trial account, a challenge account, a piece of paper. You need to be practicing your craft every single day. Take a Funder Pro free trial. Open a demo account on Osprey. I don't care what you do. I just want you to do it every single day. If you don't, you will only get worse, and that's a fact. If you don't do it every day and just try it once in a while, you will be failing and just learning the same lesson on repeat. Say for example, you do 100 push-ups, and you're so sore you don't even do it for two weeks after that, and then you try it again. You literally lost all of the effects, the benefits that you had from the first 100 push-ups. 